Yo, what's good, you guys? Your boy Ben Mahari here, represent Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. You know, the NBA season is coming up, you guys, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about in the world of basketball here, guys. And so, you know, I'm going to be doing some, a little bit more of a videos of my predictions to come for this upcoming season. And I got to tell you, my Chicago Bulls are looking good, man. So I'm really excited what's going to happen this upcoming season. But I want to discuss this, you know, huge story that came out uh, last Thursday that's really hitting the airways all over the NBA and also around the media as well. So let's get started on this story here, shall we? So this is basically an alleged health insurance fraud scheme that has been pat that it was going down by some former NBA players. So let's get let's get started on this. So this is came out from the Wall Street Journal. So and quote, 18 former NBA players were players were charged in an alleged scheme to scam a league health care fund out of nearly four million dollars, according to the indictment unsealed Thursday in a federal in federal court in New York. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan accused former players, which includes guard Sebastian Telfair, Tony Allen, also power forward Glenn Davis, of submitting false claims of reimbursement of medical and dental expenses for services that they did not receive or pay for. In all, the players pocketed about $2.5 million in fraudulent proceeds, according to the indictment. The players that were charged with, with the conspiracy to commit health care fraud, which carries about, about a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Now, former NBA player Terrence Williams, who used to play for the Houston Rockets and, New, and the Nets when they played in New Jersey, was also charged with aggravated identity theft. In a new, at a news conference Thursday in Manhattan, attorney, a U.S. attorney, Audrey Strauss says that Mr. Williams is, a, is, the scheme, is the scheme's linchpin. Many of the defendants were low to mid-level players in the NBA, in the NBA during the during the 2000s. Most of them most of them have been out of the league for a few years, although some have played professional basketball overseas. Mr. Davis, who spent eight years in the NBA, who won on who won an NBA championship in 2008 with the Celtics, and also Tony Allen, who was also on that same championship team, it was also a six-time member of the league's All Defensive Team as well. The prosecutor said, prosecutor said that that from 2017 to 2020, um, Terrence Williams obtained fraudulent medical and dental invoices, which he, which he sent to other former NBA players. Those players then submitted fraudulent claims to the NBA's healthcare fund and unaware that the claims were fraudulent. Then the plan paid the claims, according to the prosecutors. Mr. Williams received about at least $230,000 in kickbacks from the defendants, according to the indictment. He also He's also accused of reviewing some of the other players' claims before they were submitted. One player that didn't receive kickback, Mr. Williams impersonated a plan manager in an email and pretended that there was a problem with the invoice, according to the prosecutors. Jessica Gray Allen, Mr. Allen's wife, was also charged in the also charged according to the indictment. Federal agents arrested 16 defendants across the country on Thursday on Thursday morning. A lawyer that represented Mr. Williams in court Thursday did not respond for requests for comment. Todd Todd Spoken, a lawyer for Eddie Robinson who played for the Chicago Bulls, said that he was coordinating cleaning his clients clients surrendered to the authorities and would address the allegations in court. The lawyers for the other defendants could not have been identified at this time. So, Mrs. Strauss, who's basically the indictment, who basically is the lead lawyer in this whole in this whole investigation, claims it was pretty much ongoing. The health care plan was funded by NBA teams, according to the indictment. It is administered by the Board of Trustees appointed by the NBA and the National Basketball Players Association, the Labor Union. The NBA said in a statement that it would cooperate with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and it said that the health care plan supports players' health and well-being through their playing careers and over, particularly th and, over, and over the course of their lives, which makes the allegations particularly disheartening. The Players Association said in a statement that it was aware of the indictment and it would continue to monitor the whole matter. Ms. Strauss also says that, that the players each sought to each sought reimbursements for fake medical expenses ranging from $65,000 to as much as $420,000. In one instance, Mr. Terrence Williams submitted a bogus claim for $19,000 worth of expenses for services at a chiropractic office in, in Chito, California, according to the indictment. The health care plan approved by the claim was paying Mr. Williams at least $7,672,000. Basically, complaint, I'm sorry, the word is supposed to say $7,672.55. Players also submitted phony claims from two dental offices in Beverly Hills, California, and a wellness office in Washington State that specializes in sexual health and agitating. Whatever that means. 
In some cases, Mistral said that the travel records and emails other, and other evidence show that the players were claims of the procedures in the medical offices were far from their locations. One player, Gregory Smith, submits claims that for root canals and crowns on 18 in Beverly Hills, he said. But also said in the quote, but Smith was nowhere near Beverly Hills or not even the state of California, but rather playing basketball in Taiwan. Other players claimed that they had root canals on the same team all on the same day, she said. Many of the fake invoices that the players submitted to their health care plans described as the same chiropractic practic, and dental services. In some cases, players submitted letters from the chiropractic office, a dentist or, or a physician claiming that the services were needed to be treated for injuries, in that, according to the indictment. Some of the letters were, uh, were on the letterhead and had grammatical errors, according to the Devon. One even sp misspelled a player's name. The health care fund paid Mr. Paid Mr. Allen $420,000 in reimbursement for the chiropractic and dental services he claimed that he was receiving. As for Sebastian Telefair, he also received $358,000 $358, for the fund for the funds of the chiropractic and dental services. The funds were related to review by the by the attorney, by basically by the prosecutors and Telfair and the other players retroactively denied the, denied the payments and Mr. Allen repaid the seven three hundred fifty thousand dollars according to the indictment. So my personal thoughts about the whole situation. It's really, really a bad look on the NBA. And I'm gonna tell you why. The reason is is that the NBA built this built this uh insurance plan to make sure that when these players retire, it doesn't matter what level that they were, if they were lower, mid-level exception, or even the superstars for that matter. They built that insurance plan to make sure that these players were, were going to be protected and taken care of when they basically, when their days in the NBA are over with. Now, keep this in mind. The uh, minimum of, of an NBA career is basically three years, right? There's so many players in the NBA right now that don't that are not, that aren't sure when their next paycheck is going to be, or if they're going to get a guaranteed contract. So the way I look at it is simple as this. The way I look at it is that the NBA, that the, a lot of these players are trying to find different ways to make money. And in doing so, they're basically risking the integrity and basically risking other players who may need those kind of medical services. Now, the, a lot of the insurances are going to basically look at each of their cases with a fine shape to comb. And it's pretty much unfair. You know, a lot of these guys that need that need those services, need it, need those services, you know what I'm saying, are going to have to basically wait and wait for their whole entire, you know, case to be, you know, processed, to be checked out thoroughly. And it's going to take a lot more time for them to get their cases checked out than they would just basically try to go through it immediately. So this is really a, a black mark on the NBA on this aspect. Now. Now there's going to be people out there that say, well, a lot of these politicians kind of do the same familiar things. Here's the big difference, though. Politicians are basically, they know some, they know a lot of the things about the law and know how to scaver through the system. Okay? They know how to take, they know how to figure this whole thing out. Right? So but most times, they're going to basically get, have more chances of getting away with, with more egregious crimes than what they say, like a professional athlete for that matter, who doesn't, who hasn't, doesn't have a good, decent knowledge about law and how to skate, how to skate, make a quick buck and how to skate through the system. So it's really, really a very bad look on bad look on the players that basically participated in this. And when I read the names of a lot of the people that were involved in this game, I mean, it goes all the way back to the early 2000s. Eddie Robinson, I haven't heard his name since he was in, since he was in Chicago. I remember him. All right. Sebastian Telfair, you know, Darius Miles was also in the list too. I mean, even Glenn Davis, Tony Allen, like, these guys, you these guys are like you heard these, you heard their names, and you would sit there like, man, like what were they doing with their money at the time? And this is really a heartbreaking situation because, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, I don't know what I don't know what they were doing in terms of their money management, but a lot of people, but a lot of people try to tell them like, listen, whenever you have that kind of money, it's not going to last forever, so you have to make sure to pretty much save every cent and be worry of the investments that you decide to invest into because a lot of those investments that you that many think that they're good are basically fraudulent in of itself and so this is really a very very tr troubling time for a lot of these retired players and and don't think for a second that the other sports leagues like the nfl or nhl or mlb are looking at this whole situation from a very from a very you know close distance because trust me if they see one of those situations coming down on their watch, they're going to be looking at this very, very closely. And trust me, they don't want to do deal with that. 
considering the fact that the NFL has a history, I'm not giving the players any health benefits, especially to the retired players. I mean, the, those players need more medical assistance more than anybody. You guys know that. I don't need to go into further details of that. It's same with the NBA, especially, because a lot of these guys, when they retire, a lot of them are not going to be making the same amount of money that a lot of the superstars make because a lot of the superstars, they get guaranteed contracts. Some of them get lifetime contracts with, you know, endorsements. They know that their money is going to be going to be set no matter what. You know what I mean? A lot of these mid-level players, a lot of these lower exception players, you know what I mean? They don't get the same kind of benefit. They're going to get the, the same kind of leeway. And it's kind of like an eye opener to the fact that a lot of these players, they're not always, they're not going to be paid equally. I mean, that just is what it is in terms of how the system is set up. And so, it's a very, very unfortunate situation, and I'm really, really just, you know, disheartened by it at all because I really like a lot of these players too, man, because I want to see them, you know, make their money, you know, doing good things, and you know, maybe find some job working in broadcasting or do something, you know, you know, in their communities, you know what I mean? But this right here, this is really going to hurt a lot of the retired players that need to have that kind of, you know, health assistance and kind of these health, you know, procedures because a lot of them aren't able to have those kind of things covered by insurances. We all know how, you know, messed up the health insurance, the health system is in this country alone. I mean, a lot of the things that is going on right now is absolutely ridiculous. But for them to try to defraud the system that way, it's really going to hurt. It's going to really hurt a lot of these retired players that really need those kind of level of assistance, man. And it's just a very unfortunate situation, and I'm very, very, you know, disheartened by it. But this this is basically an ongoing story, and, we're, and there's going to be a lot more information that's going to come out of this as you know days and the weeks go by about this whole situation. As we're getting ready to start a new season of NBA basketball, so, but I'm gonna keep y'all in the loop about what about what happens from this whole case, and give, maybe give you guys more information as you know a lot of the stuff comes comes out about this whole you know investigation. So that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And with that, I'm out. Peace.